الحمد لله وصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله إن, إن, إن يسألك علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وشفاء من كل داء وسقم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وقر بزدنا علما وصلي لهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم إن نسرك الفتح في هذا الكتاب وأن يجعل نورا في قبر المؤلف uh, this is al-bab al-thani. Dhikru ajnas al-mawjudat wa mawda' al-insani minha. So it's mentioning the ajnas or the genuses of created things and the, the place of the human being amongst them. So jins is, uh, is an Arabic word that is probably related to genus. Um, sometimes you get these strange... Uh, linguistic coincidences, but very often there is relationships, uh, certainly in the Indo-European languages, but when you get into the Semitic languages, I think it's a little uh, more difficult, but it's probably uh, related. So jins is, you basically have, um, the genus is is something that it's it's covers a lot of different things. So like, in tools, if you look at tools as a genus, then you have all these different species under the genus of tools. So if you look at created things, our minds are designed to categorize things, to place them into categories. It's one of the things that the human mind does. It categorizes. And so we, we put things together. Now, people will categorize things uh, differently, and, and you can have some differences of opinions about these. But generally, there's a, a logic to categorization. So he says, قبل إيجاده للمحسوسات السفلية كما روي أن أول ما خلق الله تعالى القلم ثم اللوح وقال أجري بما هو كائن إلى يوم القيامة So he says know that the body and Allah one of the names of Allah is al-bari so he's al-khariq al-bari al-musawwir the khalq is the ijad from la shay comes into so these are describing different stages of creation because Allah creates things atwar in stages. I mean, he says be and it is, but his sunnah is that things are created in stages like the human janine, even the human being, the first human being, Adam and he'll get into that. So, um, and then the musawwar is the one who actually brings the form of the thing out. So the, the, the basic material is created and then from that material, it begins to emerge into uh, different things. And from those different things, the speciation happens. So Allah yusawwiruhu. So he's al-khariq al-bari al-musawwir. And, and, and so he says that he's al-wajib al-wujud. This term is from, uh, Ibn Sina is the, is the first one that uses this term. And the idea behind it, because the dominant uh, theological position of our ummah is that that, that every, when you, this is the argument from contingency, that when you look at things, created things, they're contingent. In other words, they're from the realm of possibilities. They don't have to have existed. They, they exist based on something else. So like we weren't here and now we're here. Before we were here, our parents were here. And then before they were here, our grandparents, and then our great-grandparents. If you go back, some people knew their great-grandparents, but if you get great-great-grandparents, it's very rare that somebody would have ever known their great-great-grandparents. But the, the, the basic idea is that we were nothing, and now we're a thing. So what was that contingent upon? What, what, what did it rest upon? It rested upon a murajjah that brings us into existence, that decides that we will come into existence. And so uh, the, the, the position of the Muslims is that, like the Christians and the Jews, that creation is ex nihilo. 
It, it, it came out of nothing. And for it to come out of nothing means that it, it's, it's contingent. And, and so what is wajib al-wujud, because this is mumkin al-wujud, it's contingently existent. It's the, the, because it could exist or it could not exist. Both possibilities existed before it came into existence. Just like a unicorn. A unicorn exists in our mind. Nobody's ever seen a unicorn as far as we know, but somebody imagined it. So you can imagine things, but then imagining a horse with a horn is not that uh, far-fetched because there are many animals that have horns, right? I mean, even a rhinoceros basically has that horn there. So you can imagine a, a, a horse with a horn, like a narwhal. It's a whale with a horn. That actually exists. But for, for a, a unicorn to come into existence in reality, it would need somebody pr to bring that, not in the realm of imagination, but in the realm of actualization. So Allah is wajib al wujud because he's the only existent reality that is not contingent upon something else. So he's necessarily existing. He exists out of necessity. Everything else exists out of uh, contingency. But he exists out of necessity. He's wajib al wujud and so he said, he, because he is the sabab, and we use this majaz, and you know, the sabab, he's, he's the, the, uh, the sabab of every existent thing, right? Because everything is musabab. It came in with us, there's some illa behind it, some, some cause. And, and, and not in, we're, we use these terms very carefully in theology because of the problem of you know, calling like God the first cause in the sense of a cause and an effect relationship. So he, he is sababu kulli mawjudin wa kullu mawjudin fa minhu wa bihi is from him and by him. In other words, it, em, it, it emanates from his kun, right? It comes out of Allah's creative power and it's bihi. It can only be through him. Right? He's, the, he's the means by which we come into existence. He is the reality behind uh, our existence. The means is the material that he creates first and then brings us out of that. So then he says, uh, there's two types of created things. The ma'qulat al uluwiyah the celestial intelligibles. So there, there are things that, that are understood uh, in, 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 in we, we, we comprehend them and they're intelligible, they're, they're immaterial, like angels. Angels are not material. They can take form, but they're not actual material beings. They're immaterial, they're spiritual beings. So substance, when you look at substance, there's material substance Im, Im, and immaterial substance. So they have substance, but it's immaterial. So that's, those are the ma'qalat al-ulwiyah. And then there's the mahsusat al-sufliya. They're the terrestrial, sensible things that we can actually see and touch and feel. And that's the realm that we exist in down here. But then we go into like the Malakut. We go into, we have access to dream worlds, true dreams. So we go into other worlds. So we know there's other dimensions that are intelligible, but they're not, uh, we don't experience them by sensoria. We experience them uh, through the medium of our minds. And then he says uh, that, so those celestial intelligibles were created before the, 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 the terrestrial. This is why um, Imam al-Laqani says, uh, uh, so he says in Joharat al Tawheed that look into yourself first. That's where you begin. Ibdabi nafsika. And then look into the, because Ibrahim was told to look into the malakut of the heavens and the earth, that we have access to that through understanding. Think about where things come from, because all of this we see, like you see a, 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 a tree. Under the tree is all these roots that we don't see. The only time we see the roots is when the tree's uprooted, right? 
So it, like the wind comes and it knocks the tree over. And then you see these roots. Or you get a mudslide and then you see this whole root structure. That's the unseen world. So there's a whole source of this world that we're in that comes from the unseen that we don't see. But it's real. It's called al-ghayb. Even the material scientists know that most of the universe, I mean, they actually say around 95% of the universe is dark matter. We don't see it. They know it's there, but we don't see it. So it's just like the light spectrum. Nobody, before we had access to infra and ultra red light, nobody knew that there were other lights. Hummingbirds see colors we don't see. They, ha they have actually access to colors that we don't have access to based on uh, their eyes. So, so even in the physical world, there are things that are unseen that now we can measure because we have material uh, technology that enables us to measure them. We have microscopes, so we see this whole unseen world. That was hidden from us before. Now we see it. So people, in, uh, in, you know, the ancients understood these things. I mean, dragons, where did dragons come from? You know, dra those are, it's all comes from going deep inside through meditation, through going inside. They saw things. There's sea creatures we don't even know about. There's sea creatures that have never been seen before in the ocean that we don't even know about. I mean, they, for a long time, they didn't even think the giant squid existed. Then they found the marks of it on whales because there's a fight between whales and giant squid in the, in the ocean. It's only recently that they, they had, they thought they were sailors' wives' tales about these giant squid. But these giant squid exist. So just like in the seen world, there's all these unseen things that people thought were wives' tales, and then you find out later that they actually believe in them. That's probably not a politically correct thing to say, wives' tales. Yes. We'll say husbands' tales. Yeah. So, 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 uh, so then he says, so he says, Then go to the celestial realm. And then go to the lower realm, this terrestrial realm. You will see a creation with wisdom. You know, this, the, the, this is a, this is a, a, a warp and, and, and wove of, of wisdom by a hand, a, 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 an all-powerful hand. Nusijat bihikamin, creation. It's been woven with wisdom by, by, by the divine weaver's hand. And, and people, you know, they don't see the patterns because they're not looking. But if you start looking, you'll see the patterns. So then he says that the, it's ruya, and this is shigot tamrid for, for the students here. You know, when, when, when it's put into the Mabrin and Majhul, generally, it means that it, it has some weakness in it, in the narration. So he's saying that it's been related, that, that the first thing that Allah created was the pen, al-qalam, thumma al and then the, the loh, and then the, uh, the tablet. And Allah said to it, ajri bima huwa ka'inun ila yawm qiyamah, write what is going to be uh, existent until the end of time. And so that loh al-mahfuz is the matrix. Everything is written in that loh al-mahfuz. And one of the things about the modern world, which is very interesting, is that the, uh, you know, we, we now have in our hand these, these, um, these telephones that are like a loh. And there's all the, it's everything in there. It's all mahfuz. It's all mahfuz. You can just click on and look up anything you want, the uh, theory of relativity. Just click it on, and they'll explain it to you, E equals mc squared, and then they'll give a whole, you can even read what Einstein said about it. It's all there. You can look up um, any hadith, maktaba shamila. You can look up uh, any tafsir. It's all there on this loh. And wh when J Jobs first introduced it, he introduced it with the alwah of Moses. Uh, that was on, when he, when he first, revealed it. He showed the, the loh. And so here's the loh and mahfud in our hand, and we don't think Allah has all the information, everything we've ever done. Every because that loh that you have walking around with you can tell you where you were. If you if it was with you, 
It'll tell you where you were, what store you went in. Now the police use it to track people if they were there or not. They'll know if you're in an accident, whether they're on your phone or not. So this is all, this is all material sciences that is, have, have, has achieved this. And we don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can't uh, monitor everything. Can't. Allah says that the angels are writing everything down. They're recording. I mean, they're literally recording everything. Right? They're recording everything. In a digital book. I mean, Allah uses that term, marqum. Ruqum is, is digit. Marqum is digitalized. So it's a book that is, it's, it's a book that everything is written in it. It's a numbered book. And so Allah is showing all this, and zero one, on off. I mean, that's how it's all done, with zero one. There's only one and zero. There's Allah and nothing. Everything else is zero. And so everything's recorded now like this. And so we're in this world where all these signs are so manifest and yet people are more heedless than ever. The ancients didn't have any of the signs that we have and they were more aware, more present with God. So then he says, So this is also uh, very weak, but it's related and uh, you know, some of them, they don't, uh, they consider it not, you know, to be, but anyway, it's related and he's using it. Imam al-Ghazali also in the end of his Kitab al-Ilm, he has a whole section on the importance of the aql. So the aql is very important. We have aql and naql, yeah, reason and revelation. Reason is very important. Without, without reason, we, we have no access to revelation. So Allah has given us an aql. We're not mu'tazilite. So the aql is, is, is central in our tradition, but the revelation is necessary. The Mu'tazirite actually have a, a view that the aql can reach truth without revelation. Our tradition says no, the, there's too many blind spots in the intellect, there's too many, and, and there's certain things that it could never know, it could never work out except through revelation. But it's important, and so he says, uh, that he's, Allah said to the internet, So he said, come, and it came, and then he said, go, and it went. And, and then Allah said in this tradition, So by you I, I reckon, and, and, and by you, so I, in other words, I punish and I reward, and, and I uh, withhold or prevent, and upon you is my reward and my punishment. So I, I take and I give, uh, I, I withhold, and I give thawab and iqab. So now he's gonna move into a philosophical position, which th this is a very debated position in the, amongst the uh, philosophers and things about the aql al-awwal, what they call the aql al-awwal. So, uh, but he's obviously uh, inclines towards this position. So he's belled ishara bihi ila johar and sharif. So it's indicating that this is a, a, a noble essence, anhu tamba'ith al-uqul al-bashiriya, and from it emanate the human intellects. So there is a view that the aql, the, the, this first intellect, is, is where abstraction comes from. That without it, we would not be able to abstract. So to use a really poor analogy, it's like the hard drive for the software of our individual intelligences. So it's like the cloud. So we're tapping into this, and that's how we're able to abstract and get beyond uh, what the animals are in. The animals are only in perception. They perceive, but we conceive. So we can actually conceptualize. And this is something that differentiates us from other creatures. So you abur anhu bar aqal al awal. So it's the first intellect kama fit ta'bir al ba'd. So he means the philosophers. Wa qara qawmun al aqal ha huna ibaratun an al qalam an al-dhkur fi al-khabr al-akhar. Wallahu a'lam. And some of them said that the intellect here refers to uh, it's it's an expression for the aforementioned pen in in the previous uh, Khabar tradition, Wallahu a'lam, and Allah knows best. So he's he's saying Allahu a'lam. He I, he's not really taking a position 
here, but he does indicate that he inclines towards that position of al-aqal al-awwal. ثم أوجد الله تعالى السماء والروحانيات. So after that, Allah made the heavens and all of the the immaterial uh, substances, the spiritual matters. الذين لا يستكبرون عن عبادتي ولا يستحسرون. Excuse me. So they are neither uh, puffed up with pride uh, from 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 devotion to God, nor do they weary of that devotion. They don't get tired. So these are creatures that are created solely for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, they, they don't have shahwa, they don't have animality, they have pure spirit, uh, the angelic realm. And so his creation of all of these things is by way of ibda, which is unparalleled creativity. In other words, ibda is is ala ghayri mithal musbaq there's no previous template so all of human creativity is from previous templates like whenever they do aliens or any of these fantasy things there's always why do they have hands and faces and they speak and they, because they can only work from pre-existing templates they cannot conceptualize anything outside of some type of experience they've had. Whereas Allah can do from from ghayri mithal and musbaq. There's no pre-ordained pre, pre template. There's, there's nothing that Allah is working on. There's no iterative process where, hmm, I'll try this or I'll try that. It's ibda' badi'u samawati wal ard. So the badi' is the one, the originator of the heavens and the earth without any prior existent thing to, to, to suggest to God what he should do, what God should do. So, what ibda'uhu ijadu shay'la'an shay'in mawjudin min qablu. So, it's, it, ibda' is, is to create a thing without any prior thing uh, uh, that enables that thing to come into existence. لا عن شيء موجود من قبله. It's not from some pre-existing thing, or idea, or template. ثم خلق الأركان الأربعة. So this is a pre-modern type of, and and I, I I do think it's it's perfectly valid. It's more poetic uh, than it is scientific, but it, it's based on. Uh, experience. So, so then he says, then he created the four elements. So the, the arkan al-arba are the four elements. Most pre-modern uh, cosmologies believed in four or five elements. So for instance, in, in, if you go to Ayurveda, if you go to the, the Hindu tradition, you'll find um, they, ha they have these the elements. If you go to the Chinese tradition, they have the five elements. If you go to the Greek tradition, they have the four elements. So there was this idea of what were the fundamental elements. I mean, now we know with the, uh, the table of elements that there's over 100 different types of elements. There's a lot of elements. But all of them will go back to, to these basic things. And so in that way, Harak and Mutanatti'un, if, if you just look at it at a basic level, these things are true. So at Harara, so like uh, you can say radium is an element, but it comes out of the element of, of fire, right? Because it's, 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 it's heat. It's a type of uh, radiation. So... Um, and, the, and so that's harara, which is heat. Buruda, which is cold. It's the absence of heat, right? Buruda. And then rutuba, which is wet or moist. And then yubusa, which is dry. So these four elements, human beings, we have these in our bodies, according to this traditional model. Foods are hot, wet, cold, or dry. So for instance, dates are hot and dry. So if you eat a lot of dates and you're hot and dry, they'll... They can, they can actually create disruptions, like you, you can break out in rashes, things like that. This is all experimental mujarrab, as the Arabs say. Mauritania, they know these things very well. Because I was eating a lot of dates when I was there. Maryam kind of felt sorry for me because it was, the food was so limited. People from Af West Africa know about this. I mean, some, it's amazing how, how 
uh, few things that people live on out in the desert. So she would get the dates out, and I ate a lot of dates, and then I broke out, and they all said, ah, you're eating too much, it's hot and dry. So they understood that. It's mujarrab. So, the, so then these elements were created, and then the jamadat. These, the jamadat in the periphery's tree, you have, you know, you have the substance, and then the, the first thing you have, is it material, immaterial, and then is it living or is it non-living? So if it's non-living, it's jamad. These are called jamadat. And then the, the living is the namiat. So then, then is, it, is it vegetable or animal, right? So, so the namiat are, the, are the, the things that grow. And then the haywanat are the, the, the animal things. So these are sentient beings. And then, وَخَتَمَ بِسُورَةِ insania. And then he completed creation with this human form. كَمَا أَشَارَ إِلَيْهِ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ So this hadith, بِقَوْلِهِ, it's in Sahih Muslim. Uh, it's actually from Ka'b al-Ahbar. It's one of the gharaib of uh, Sahih Muslim. But it's actually from Ka'b al-Ahbar. Um, and it's, it, it obviously can't be taken literally. Um, but it, it's about the, uh, the creation. It's from the Isra'iliyat because they have these beliefs also. Um, and the idea that human being was created on, the, on Jumu'ah in the last of the days. So then he says, So when we speak about creation, most of the time we will say that a thing comes, we mention the thing that it comes from before it. So Allah created the human being from Turab, from earth. So the human being is created from earth. And then he says, And then there's a composite. So we're composite. Unlike Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the, in the Western scholastic tradition, they say that God is simple. But that means that غير مركب. It just means that God is not composite. There's no hypostasis in God, according to the Jews and the, and the Muslims. The Christians have a different view on that. But our tradition is very clear. We are radical monotheists, and that God is one, and, and that there's no composite nature to God, nor are there more than one God. So God is neither composite in uh, the divine nature. In other words, there's no parts. So it negates tarkiba and it negates ta'addud, neither uh, of them. And so, so then, وَلِذَلِكَ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَمِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَا زَوْجَيْنِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ From everything we created in pairs. So everything is created in pairs. Even the atom, right? When you get down to that basic fundamental structure, you'll find these pairs, these opposites. Allah has created, سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْأَزْوَاجَ كُلْهَا مِمَّا تُنْبِتَ الْأَرْضِ وَمِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَمِمَّا لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Glory be to the one who created everything in pairs. These are, these are what now, uh, th this term is used a lot, but it's true, the, they're binaries. Allah has created things, this is a binary world. There's up, there's down. It's all opposites. There's hot, there's cold. There's wet, there's dry. Right? There's intelligence, there's stupidity. Everything is in pairs. Allah has put everything in pairs. Even our bodies are paired. Allah has put us in, 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 in these pairs. And then he made for us, خَرَقْنَا مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ azwaja. We made from yourselves mates, pairs, opposites, not the same, opposites. I mean, that's really important. They're opposites. A zoj is opposite. The left and the right foot. They're not the same. They're opposites. They're mirror opposites. In the same way that male and female are mirror opposites, the, the woman, when she sees the man, she sees her internal reality. When the man looks at the woman, he sees his internal reality. Men are hard on the outside, they're soft on the inside. Women are tough on the inside, but they're soft on the outside. This is the fitrah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why women have immense capacity to bear pain. And it's well known, anybody who's worked in medicine knows this. You know, get these old ladies, you do an arterial uh, blood draw on them. Ah, I'm fine, go ahead, sweetie. You know? <laughs> And then you get the, the big biker, you know, starts crying. <laughs> I'm not making that up, am I? Dr. Yusuf, have you seen that? Huh? Yeah. 
So, so, then, so then he says, uh, Everything from these uh, from these extraordinary, uh, unprecedented creations are complete. There's absolutely no deficiency or defect in them. If there was any defect or deficiency, it would indicate a defect in the, the mubdi' wasani, the one who made or created them. So as for the created one who is composite by nature, it's possible he can have deficiency. But that, that deficiency comes not from the original template, not from the original creation. It comes later. So in other words, like birth defects, all these things that happen, these are from different things that have entered into uh, when, when people don't. I mean, there's a lot of reasons for them. There's genetic reasons. But they're, they're arid. They're not from the original. They're not from the original, the way Allah created. The, Allah created everything perfect, but then because sin enters the world, because of the, and this is not to say, astaghfirullah, that people that have, unfortunately, some cultures, they actually believe that. There's like a punishment and things like that. There's a lot of reasons. Now we, there's environmental reasons. You can be exposed to toxins and you get children that are born with birth defects and things like that. So this is all arid. It's not from the original creation. That's his point. So don't think the defects that you see are from God's creation. They're actually secondary effects. All right? And then he says, uh, And then he says, So this is an idea. I mean, I think he's referring to as what they call the superlunary world. Um, you know, the, 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 the mubdi'at in the, in the celestial realm are free from any possibility of corruption. So things in this world can be corrupted. Even our own physical uh, 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 genetics, their con corruption can actually come in. So, so, but he's saying that in, the, in that higher world, there's no uh, realm. They, it stays in its pure state. Now they used to think, I mean the Aristotelian view was that everything in the heavenly world was perfect, everything revolved in perfect circles. You had uh, Ptolemy who created the epicycles to explain retrograde motion in planets because he wanted everything, circle was the perfect, because the circle is, 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 is a perfect form because it, it has no beginning and no end. So it represents in that way a kind of symbolization of, of, of the divine reality. And that's why the circle was often used for that effect. Um, we, you know, we make a circle around a square, which is very interesting that we, that when we do tawaf, the squared circle, right? We make a circle around a square in the, in the tawaf. So that's just part of Allah's creation is that he's, he's, he's put all these mysteries into it. And so then, what insanu insanani, the, the human being is two human beings. Ahaduhuma Adam. So Adam is, is the first human being. And Adam is from, most of them say it's from Udma, you know, Udma tar ard, because he was taken from the topsoil of, of all the earth. Allah took, and that's why we have white, black, brown, yellow. We have all these different colors, red, because all of the different soils are, are there. In, in Adam. And so we have what they call recessive genes. The dominant gene is dark, right? We know that. So light comes out of the recessive. So, and that's why Adam was tawny. He was dark. And Hawa was dark. They had to have been. Uh, Hawa in Arabic is one of the meanings of it. Lahwa is very dark. So, 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 so that's the first. Uh, He's the father of humanity. So he um, really, amongst human beings, he takes the place of the seed. 
الذي منه انشئ غيره from it other others were created so from the seed comes other seeds right so he's the first albari ta'ana qad tawalla bi nafsi ijaduhu so allah took it upon allah to create adam directly without intermediary ijaduhu wa tarbiyatuhu and also to uh, educate him to raise him and to teach him كما نبهت على علي بقوله ما منعك أن تسجد لما خلقت بيدي so he says to Iblis what has prevented you from prostrating or bowing down to us uh, bowing down uh, to what I have created with my own hand بيدي وقوله تعالى وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها and Adam was taught Allah taught Adam all of the names so Allama Adam. So Allama in Arabic, Alama is a mark. And the, as we know, the cuneiform writing, the original writing was actually Allama. It was to imprint into mud. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that it's been imprinted in us, this knowledge of naming. And what naming is, is naming is being able to see the universal in the particular. This is the gift that Allah has given the human being. It's called abstraction. Tajirid. Yujarridu al kulia min al juz'iya. He sees the universal in the particular. And so, what, this is essentially tawheed. We have been created as muwahideen. We are making everything one. So, so the muwahid is the one who, who makes something one. So, when we talk about book, like I say, this is a book. What is a book? This is one book. But what is a book? How is it that our intellects can derive out of one particular book the concept of book? So we can have big books, little books, fat books, skinny books, written books, picture books, Japanese books, Persian books, Arabic books, but they're all books. What is that, our ability to see the bookness? of a book. That is the ability to make many one. And that is the, that's what Adam has been taught to do. He's been taught to make many one. So all of these attributes of God that look like pluralities that in many cultures they end up being worshipped like Shiva and Kali, right? These are different, these are attributes of God, but they, they've personified into actual other than God, beside God, right? So seeing the many in the one, seeing the one in the many, not the many, not getting, takathuru. you have been distracted by multiplicity. Takatharat al-ashya, you're distracted by multiplicity. Until you go to the source. Right? You're distracted. I mean, takathar means obviously also accumulation of wealth, but takathar at rashya, multiplicity is takathar. So you're distracted by multiplicity. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this gift that He taught Adam. And then His children by extension. He created them also. Al Bari, the Creator. But He made their, their nurturing and their education by means, both material and immaterial both material and immaterial, bodily and spiritual. So our parents are the source of our material existence. And the immaterial is the angels that are actually, they, 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 they are the ones that make sure everything's happening properly. So they're actually with us all the time. They're our guardians, but they're also in the womb. They're making sure that everything is happening that's meant to happen, for good or ill. 
كما روي في الخبر الورد يكون أربعين يوما نطفة سو الذين يتولون إنشاءه وتربيته كما روي في الخبر الورد يكون أربعين يوما نطفة ثم يصير علقة ثم يصير مطغة ثم يبعث الله ملكا فينفخ فيه الروح so the, the, uh, in, the child and see the walad is and Allah says al walad look at this for all these pro-abortion people the walad is 40 days a nutfa awalam tukun nutfa weren't you a nutfa like you were never a nutfa we were all nutfa right 40 yawman nutfa which is the zygote and it's not 40 days this hadith is actually a, a more correct because there are different uh, narrations of this hadith so the idea of 120 has been clearly uh, disproven by modern embryology and science will dictate if it's absolute if it's qat'i then you have to reinterpret the hadith if science is qat'i you have to reinterpret the hadith so we don't have any doubt about the embryological stages anymore this this is ilm qat'i and so the idea that it's 120 days is just it's even though that is the jamhur and the vast majority there are ulama that said 40 days but it's clear that it's 40 days so so here and then Allah, so it becomes nutva zayga, and then it becomes anaka, it becomes, it clings to the womb, so it embeds. The zayga moves down, so the fallopian tube, when the boeta comes out, and then the, the many comes, they meet. And that is an incredible meeting, because that is the moment of creation, that Allah is bringing a new creation into existence. And all of us went through that. And when they meet, immediately, biological life begins. The boeda doesn't, it's, it's not biological life. The many is not biological life. Right when they meet, biological life begins. And this is a completely unique set of genetics. In any form that he created to, to combine you. Allah says that in the Quran. He combined you. And now they talk about combinatorial DNA. Allah combined the human being from all of the Prophet ﷺ said every child, every single human being from Adam and Eve all the way down to your creation, every single one of them participated in your coming into existence. And we know that now with material sciences. The Prophet told us that. Who told the Prophet that? Alamu shadid al quwa So he says that that it, it becomes anaka, it embeds into the womb, and then it becomes a mudra. It, it, the, the initial stages, it looks like a chewed piece of flesh. And you can see this now with microscopes. They, they see this. It looks chewed piece of flesh. And then it becomes, uh, after the mudra, and then it becomes ilam and kason al ilam al and then Allah creates a new creation. So the angel brings in the ruh. And this is the beginning, I think, because the first brain waves that we detect are, around, are at around seven weeks. So it's around 40 days. You, you see the beginning of actually brain activity. So consciousness is emerging in the human being. Because the ruh, consciousness is from, is from the ruh. And because your parents are the means by which you came into existence, Allah has magnified their right. And He has necessitated after giving gratitude to Allah to give gratitude to your, to your parents. To thank me and to thank your parents. And to me is your return. We call the, 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 the walad is called ibnan, which, which is from min uh, I built the building. So what he's saying there is very interesting. The, the, the bani didn't create the materials. He's just putting them together. So he's the source but he's not the, the real source. He's just putting them together. So now, So to make mention of the elements in, 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 by which the human being has come into existence. 
So he mentioned these elements that he created Adam. And he mentioned that he created the human being through seven degrees. There's seven uh, stages. And, and he indicates this in different places uh, based upon uh, what, what the wisdom of it requires. So whatever the wisdom required, Allah makes mention of it. In one place he said, So when he said he created him from Torab, this is to indicate the very beginning, the very initiation of creation is from Torab. And then he said, And then from from. Uh, Mud, which is the, the mixture of the two. Which is now he's mixed water with earth, right? Because we're water and earth. If you look at human constituents, the constituents that make up the human being, it's water and earth. We're about 70% water. As you get older, it, you dry out more, but we're about 70. Children have even more. Why we have to hydrate all the time? Because we're water. And then we're earth. We're made up of the same elements. It, it has. Uh, all, all these elements that you find in earth, you're going to find in the human being, calcium and potassium and all these different elements. So, so then, مِنْ طِينِ إِشَارَةٍ إِلَى الْجَمْعِ بَيْنَ التُرَابِ وَفِي آخر مِنْ حَمَئٍ مَسْنُونَ إِشَارَةٍ إِلَى طِينًا مُتَغَيِّرْ بِالْهَوَائِ أَدْنَ تَغَيُّرْ Now he's added oxygen to the mix. And it becomes مِنْ حَمَئٍ مَسْنُونَ so it's, And it's also black. So it's a black... Uh, Clay that has a smell because of the, 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 the oxygen. And this is an indication because Iblis, when he refused to bow down to Adam, one of the things he says, what, I'm going to bow down to something, like black clay? Like he actually points out the color of the clay because he's fire. And fire, the hottest fire, what's it look like? His white fire. You know, he's like very proud of his, his coloration. Like he's looking. So... If you want to know the Atba'u Iblis from Atba'ullah, that's one of the hallmarks, is that they have no problem with color. Either way, the Prophet ﷺ said, لا فضل لي عربيا على عجميا ولا لي عجميا على عربيا ولا لي أبيض على أسود ولا لي أسود على أبيض. He went both ways. There's no preference. And he also didn't collectivize. He didn't say, لا, لا فضل للبيض على السود. There's no preference of whites over black. He said, al-abyad ala al-aswad, because it goes down to the individual level. I was in New York and this man said to me, you know, he's telling me how you're, you, you're uh, he said, you, you're a recipient of white privilege. I said, I, I don't use those terms. He said, well, because you benefit from it. I said, well, give me an example of white privilege. He said, well, I was in a building and these two cops came in and they, and, and, uh, and I, I immediately said, hey, I didn't do it. And one of the cops said, you're the right color. He said, that's white privilege. I said, no, it's not. That's racism. That's, ra that's the problem is in the cop. Don't, don't project that onto me. I'm, I'm not going to feel ashamed the way Allah created me. You know. It's a big problem. But this is, this is the source of it, is Iblis. It's, it's kibr. It's an arrogance in the heart. So, so then he says, So now it's become teen lazib, that it's ready to have form. So it's ready, like a potter forms the clay at a certain point, it's ready for him to make, he has to prepare the clay, and then he can begin to fashion what he's going to fashion. So he's saying it's teen lazib. And then, وَفِي آخر مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ مِنْ حَمَئٍ مَسْنُونَ And then it's dried and you, as if you can hear this salsara, like a, a ringing in it. And then finally, وَفِي آخر This is the, seventh, uh, the sixth stage. مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ كَالْفَخَارِ And then it becomes like this firing phase where it's, it's like a, ready for firing. وَقَدْ أُصْلِحَ بِأَثَرًا مِنَ النَّارِ So it's ready to be fired, to be put into... Uh, the, 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 the stove. Fasarak al khazaf. So it, it becomes like khazaf is, uh, is like potter's, it's the ceramic. So it's ready to be, it's finished to be prepared. 
uh, they say al Khazaf al Sini is porcelain, right? The Khazaf al the Chinese uh, ceramic. And because of this fiery potentiality in the human being, because there's, there's, there's fire, this, this force of fire, the human being has a demonic uh, susceptibility because of the fire in the human being. The human being is susceptible to that fiery element to become like a demon. And look at see his istimbat is so beautiful. So he's saying, and this is why Allah said the, uh, the human being, man was created from Salsalan Fakhar. The human being was created from this uh, fired clay. And then immediately after, الجان, and he created the jinn. There's a relationship. Because we have the element of fire in us, there's a relationship that we have, a susceptibility to become like jinn, like the demons. And then, min marijin min nar. What is marijin min nar? Nar, lahab, you know, is, is in it's, there's an instability to it. So the, the demons are unstable, they're not stable. Right? That's why people that are under demonic influence are become un, they're completely unstable. Right? It's, so, so it's like lahab. It, do, it doesn't have any istiqrar. Whereas we're earth. So we have a kind of, there's a, there's, a, there, there's a grounding to us. And healthy human beings, we say he's very grounded. Like this is what we say. And, and for people that aren't well, you say flighty. You know, they're like airy. They're not... You know, there's, they're not grounded. There's no substance. There's nothing there. Right? So then he says, so th by mentioning the jinn immediately after, that he has demonic potentiality to the degree with which there is the effects of the fire from his original creation. So he's from this, this unstable, um, this unstable flame that has no uh, grounding. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us of the completion of the human being by the blowing of the spirit into him, into the human being. I am creating a human being from clay. So I, when I have made him and then breathed into him the ruh, and this is now the bowing down of the angels. So these are the seven stages that Allah has indicated just as you see. It went through these seven stages. Now look at this. And then he indicated the completion of the human being, of the soul, with knowledges and you know, erudition by saying, and we taught Adam all the names, all of them. And then after that, he mentions the creation of the children of Adam and the elements from which they're created. Stage after stage. So we're also created in seven degrees. Just like Adam was created in these seven degrees, we are created in seven degrees. So look at the seven degrees. We created the human being from a chain beginning with earth. Two. And then we made the zygote into this clinging thing. Three. And then we created four. We created the alaqa mudra. And then we created the mudga idama five. And then we covered the 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 idam with laham, 
with meat, with flesh. We clothed it, clothed it in flesh. Seven. And then we created a new creation, another creation, a unique creation. So blessed is God, the, the best, most beautiful of creators. Now look at this. It's very important. First of all, thumma and fa are both used in the Quran. Thumma is with muhla. Fa is without muhla. When you have one over the other, you will take uh, the, the uh, like if, if you have, if a narration has thumma and fa, then the meaning is going to be fa. Right? Because thumma has the meaning of fa as well. Right? So, so it's very interesting that Allah says, because this means that they're very close together. <laughs> In fact, thumma can be actually used to be, you know, you can say, Sada ibn hu, thumma abuhu. His, his son, um, his son uh, ruled and then the father. So thumma can actually doesn't have to be tartib. Fa always has tartib. Thumma doesn't have to have tartib in Arabic, but fa always has tartib. So, so it's an indication that this was quicker than uh, is indicated by the other narrations that use thumma. And also in Surah Al-Hajj, Allah uses thumma, but here he uses fa. فَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى ثُمَّ نَشَأْنَهُ خَرْقًا آخَرْ إِشَارَةً أو إِشَارَةٌ مِنْهُ تَعَالَى إِلَى مَا جَعَلَى لَهُ مِنْ قُوَّةَ الْعَقْرِ وَالْفِكْرِ وَالنُطْقِ So this is the rationality. This is the new creation. This is when we become human. Before that we're vegetable and then animal. Now we're human. Right? And, that, and this happens very early, people. It's a human being in the womb. It's a human being. فَإِنْ قِيلَ لِمَا قَالَ فَكَسَوْنَا Now look at this. فَإِنْ قِيلَ لِمَاذَا كَسَوْنَا الْعِظَامَ الْأَحْمَا Why did he say فَكَسَوْنَا الْعِظَامَ الْأَحْمَا And then we clothed the bones with flesh. وَلَمْ يَقُولْ فَخَرَقْنَا مِنْهُ الْأَحْمَا He didn't say we created from it flesh. كَمَا قَالَ مِنْهُ فِي الْأَوَّلِ Like he said about the other thing. So if you look at it, it's all جَعَلْنَا خَرَقْنَا 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 And then he says فَكَسَوْنَا He doesn't say فَخَلَقْنَا He says كَسَوْنَا and then he says, "Qila isharatun minhu taala ila latifatin min sunihi." This is to a very subtle thing of Allah's creation. Who wa anna nutfa in tahtid al surat al azam that the nutfa when it becomes eventually these bones. Thumma ansha Allah lhamma insha an akhar. And then he creates the flesh. This is a new creation. La min al nutfa wa ajraha majr al kiswa. He made it like a cloth. Just as a human being wears a garment and he wears it out and then it's renewed. Like that, the flesh, you can cut it and you can lose a piece of it, it grows back. So he's saying, Kasona al ilam al because the laham is renewed. It's renewed. It's not like the other things. If you, if you sever the bone, you lose the bone. But the, the, the flesh can be renewed. And this is why they have grafting and all these things, right? I mean, the, grafting is basically, <laughs> you get cloth from, you know, and then you add it on and it grows back. It's amazing. <laughs> if you sever meat from an animal, it will grow back. But it's not like bones that won't uh, be restored after they've been severed. So what, if it said, how can you say that all of creation, all of humanity was created from a, a chain beginning with mud? When Adam was the one that was created, and not his children. Uh, we can, this can be said, uh, looked at from two different perspectives. When uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam from a chain from clay, his children by extension are also from that chain. But the second, with Thani, أن الإنسان يتكون من النطفة ويتربى بدم الطمث. So the, the human being he who he, he comes out of this nutfa يتكون من نطفة is created from this nutfa and then 
continues to grow from the, the, the blood that comes into the nourishment, right, from the, I mean, he's in this, the placenta. Like he says, I think, uh, I mean, tamth generally is the menstrual blood, but obviously it doesn't mean that. Um, but tamth is also, tamitha uh, is also, lam yatmithhum. So it's also related to. So he comes out, you know, it's it's out of the, the 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 pregnancy. So the very fact that it comes out of the blood of the pregnancy. So it could be damth uh, is the blood of the pregnancy. In other words, the the child is being nurtured by the mother's blood. So they both came from uh, from nourishment, and nourishment comes from animals, and animals get their uh, growth from uh, vegetables and vegetables come out of the earth and so we're all from a sulata min teen. you can look at it from that perspective so in reality the human being is from a chain from earth let the human being look at his food or her food so, so look at the human being, look at his food. We, we poured on it water, and then we uh, caused it to, from, to split from the earth. And then we brought forth the seed. And then from that, all those things that come out. And then we place that nutfa in a safe place. Not a place to be violated by a doctor. It's a safe place. It's a safe place. Hmm. وقوله تعالى والله خلقكم من تراب ثم من نطفة ثم جعلكم أزواجا and he created you from earth and then from a نطفة and then he made you into pairs وجعله الله فجعله الله تعالى من تراب على هذا الوجه and so he's saying again that we, we he says we're from earth وقال تعالى من آيات أن خلقكم من تراب ثم إذا أنتم بشر تنتشرون and from among God's signs that God created you from earth. And then there you are, human beings multiplying, spreading everywhere. Mm. The one who perfected everything that, that, that God created, he made it beautiful and perfect. And, and initiated the creation of the human being from earth, from mud. And it's what is meant by human being here is Adam. And then Allah says, we made Adam's offspring from a chain, from a ma'in mahin. Mahana is contemptible, you know. It's something low. You know, it's, it's like a vile fluid. It's a fluid that, you know, I mean, somebody would be disgusted by it. So, so that's, and mihna is like menial work, you know, menial, menial labor, they call it. And one of the, Aisha, and she, she was obviously a, a true master of the Arabic language. But when, when, she, when she was asked what the Prophet was like in the house, she, she said, Kanafi mihnati ahlihi. He was in doing menial tasks for his family. Like she, she didn't say fi khidmati ahdi. She was pointing out through the language that he did things that maybe other people wouldn't think. You know, very interesting. Fi mihnati ahlihi. Like doing those things that maybe most people wouldn't want to do. Like cleaning something that... Mm. فَاقْتَصَرَهَا هُنَا عَلَى النُّطْفَةِ دُونَ الْمَبْدَأَ الْأَوَّلِ الَّذِي هُوَ التُّرَابِ وَإِنَّمَا ذَكَرَ هَذِي الْمَبَادِي مُتَفَرِّقَةً لِحِكْمَةٍ اقْتَضَتْ تَخْصِيصَ ذِكْرِهَا فِي مَوْضَعِهَا الَّذِي ذَكَرَهَا فِيهِ وَلَيْسَ شَهْرُهُ تَخْصِيصِ ذِكْرِ كُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْ ذَارِكَ فِي مَوْضِعِهِ كما يليق بهذا الكتاب. I wish he would have gone into but he's saying uh, I could go into more detail but it's not appropriate for this book. <laughs> 
Amazing book. It's, trust me, it just it gets more and more intense. And then he ends it, and it's, uh, yeah. These are the futuhats that our imams were given. And these, these are from people that dedicate their lives to Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean, this man dedicated his life to the book of Allah, and he, Allah just gave him all of these openings from the book because it's an inexhaustible book. It's, it's an inexhaustible book. They're, they're, the meanings of the Quran will never uh, end. They don't, they don't end. It's always something going to be new from it. So, uh, online question? Yeah. How can the fundamentals of understanding oneself be explained to kids so they apply this learning early? I mean, with children, you have to be careful because children, first of all, for the first s several years, five or six years, you just need to leave them in the garden that they're in. They're in a very beautiful world. I mean, you can say things. You should, when they start understanding things, you can, you can begin to talk. I mean, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Children are naturally spiritual, so it's not difficult for them to understand the immaterial world. But, um, but you also have to be easy with them. The Prophet ﷺ said, I mean, this riwayah is, has... Uh, the meaning is very sound. You know, he said, لَعِبُهُمْ لِسَبْعٍ You know, Sayyidina Ali, uh, also it's related. لَعِبُهُمْ لِسَبْعٍ You know, play with them for, for seven years. It's a time of play. And p believe it or not, play, and this is one of Piaget's great insights, the, the um, pediatric psychologist who studied children. Um, Piaget said that their play is their work. Like, they're actually working. What they're doing when they play, they're actually, there's really important developmental elements to their play. So play is very important. Um, and then لعبهم لسبعين وأدبهم لسبعين And then begin to discipline them and train them, which means educate them, you know, أدبهم. Because uh, تأديب is also مؤدب is the traditional name for the teacher. It was called مؤدب. Because it's تربية and تعليم. It's character development as well as education. And then, uh, and then خَالِلُهُمْ لِسَبْعٍ And then befriend them, be like a friend to them. Once they reach 14, they're moving into adulthood, and then you just have to be there for them. But they're, they're, they need to become independent. And that, in Erickson's uh, crisis, it's uh, identity versus identity confusion. They need to come into their own identity as adolescents and find out who they are. And then he said, uh, after that, then you have to let them go. They're not yours. They have their own uh, trajectories. They have their own lives. I mean, they, hopefully, if you've raised them right, they'll love you and they'll care about you and they'll want to take care of you and help you and in your need. But they also have their own lives. That, and and it's, it's, it's very important to recognize that. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do with children. The, the, the Prophet um, said man kana lahu sabi falyatasaba you know if you have a child then play with the child like a child the prophet used to carry hasan and hussein on his back sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he loved children obviously uh, and children loved the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they loved the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there's so many that he visited nughair um uh, uh umair uh, who who uh, was the brother of anas when his pet died and from that, they derive several fiqh rulings, including you can visit people when their pets die as a ta'ziya. <laughs> but he visited him, and he, Ma what, what, what did the pet do? Like he was making him think. Like what happened? Because one of the things about pets is it introduces children into mortality. Because pets usually, pets don't live as, as long as we do. And so... Pets tend to die, and then they also see animals. I mean, one of the tragedies of Western culture is they've divorced meat from, uh, from slaughter. And so people no longer slaughter meat or have any relationship with the slaughtering of meat. But it's very important. And uh, there was a man who did a documentary in, in um, Canada. It's very interesting. I didn't see the documentary, but I read about it. But, but, but it was very interesting what he said because he decided to um, only eat meat for one year that, that he <coughs> raised and slaughtered. And one of the things that the farmers that he bought the meat one from was don't name the animal. 
but he would name the animal. And he said what it did, when they ate it, they would remember the name of the animal and they felt gratitude to the animal. Like they felt a gratitude that the animal sacrificed its life for, for their life. What steps can we take to be human again? How That's, can well, this is why I'm teaching the book. <laughs> Just be patient. Yeah, he's going to explain it all. How can we revive an ummah oriented towards our created purpose? I mean, I, I think we have to revive ourselves, first of all. Yeah, we should be more concerned about reviving ourselves than the ummah. Allah will revive the ummah when we revive ourselves. Yeah, we, we, we focus too much on these big grand schemes. Yeah, we need, we need, the problem is the individual. And we're all going to die. We're only here a short period. And the same problems are going to be here. I mean, human beings have been doing the same stuff for millennia. I, I mean, Iblis must be bored. You know, because we're just so predictable. I mean, that's how AI works, right? On the predictability of human beings. So, what's unpredictable is salah. That's what's amazing. And that's why it's so powerful is because, you know, people shouldn't be surprised when people bring money that they found on the street. Now they're like heroes. That should be a normal human being. When, when somebody finds something and they turn it in. I mean, I was in Medina once, and I was, because I lived in Medina, and I was living with the Mauritanians, and we used to walk every day from the Har al-Gharbiya, when, when Medina was all dirt roads. And, and I'll never forget, I said to this Sudanese man, Mirghani, the beautiful Sudanese brother, I said to him, yeah, it's really, I can't believe that the government doesn't pave the roads here. He says, Astaghfirullah, don't say that, we don't want them paved. This is the... the the earth that the prophet walked on. He said, it's musk. We don't want them paved. Now they're paved and I regret, yeah, I, he was right. <laughs> but uh, I found this big wad of money just lying there, like all these 500 reals. And another man saw it at the same time I saw it. And I picked it up and he's like, that's mine. I said, how much is there? He said, yeah. he didn't know. So I said, I took it to the police station. But it was very interesting to find a big wad of money in Medina, you know. Who would have thought? Alhamdulillah. Marabt al-Hajj found a big, uh, he told me he found a bag of gold coins uh, in, when he was in Mecca. And he just stayed there with the, the coins and the man came back. And when he saw it, he said, those are my gold coins. He said, I've been waiting for you. And he said he took it and he went into sajda to shukr. And, 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 <laughs> and Marabt al-Hajj laughed. I, he rarely laughed, but he laughed when he told me that he, he made such a shukar. <laughs> he thought that was very funny. Malikis don't make such a shukar. But, but he just thought it was funny for gold. You know, like for him, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Can you comment on Sayyid Naqib al categorization of human as not an animal? Yeah, so uh, Sayyid Naqib, who is, I consider him a great, teacher and sage and uh, beautiful, one of the most beautiful human beings I've ever met. Um, so he, he, he believes that the, the classification of genus and species with the human, because this is a logical classification. So in logic, you have what are the, called the five predicables, al 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 khamsa. So you have like uh, jins, you have nu'a, you have fasl, you have uh, amma, uh, khasa, and then you have arab. So you have, Arad khasa, khasa and arad am, or khasa and, and uh, arab. So, so the, the jins is the genus, the, the, the no' is called species, the fasl is the difference, and then you have the property and you have the, um, the accident. So, so just to give you an example, if we, if we say like a, a triangle, a triangle, the, gen, the, the genus would be, what's the genus? of a triangle. It's a polygon, right? Yeah, so the genus is polygon. So it, it, you know, it has angles, multiple angles. And, and, and then, and then the, the, what makes it different from other polygons? Three sides. So that's the fossil. That's the difference. So the species is called triangle. So the genus is polygon, the difference is three angles. And then a property would be that the angles will always, in Euclidean geometry, they'll, they'll always equal 180 degrees. That's not essential to it. In other words, it doesn't define it, but it's a specific property. And then you have the accident, 
It could be a isosceles triangle, a scaling triangle, right triangle, different types of triangles. It could be a big triangle, red triangle, blue triangle. Those are just accidents. So like color, the skin color is an accident. It's not a property because people, uh, black people can turn white and white people can turn black. It's an accident. It's not a property. And that's why it's the least important thing in, uh, you know, the accidents are the least important things in these, in these five um, things that, that, uh, that define, you have, you have uh, comprehension and extension. So those, those are what ex the thing extends to are those five things. The comprehension goes under the maqulat or the categories. So, so um, he's, he sees the human being as sui generis. It doesn't have a genus. That's his opinion, and, and it's, it's an understandable opinion, but traditionally the Muslims did accept that definition that came out of logic, haywan natiq, rational animal. We definitely have animality. I mean, we share physiology with animals. We have to sleep, we defecate, we urinate, we, 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 we uh, procreate, we do all these things that animals do, but because we are a different creation, ثُمَّنْ شَأْنَهُ خَلْقًا akhar. Uh, we do things like, for instance, we, Allah made us wear clothes. Animal, the only other animals like that, I mean, you have some newts that don't have any fur or thing, but generally most animals have feathers or fur. Those, that's their clothes. They're, they're not naked. The pig uh, is, is the closest, you know. I mean, that's what Churchill said, like, dogs look up to us, cat, cats look down on us, but pigs look at us like equals, you know. The, the pig is very similar to a human being in physiology. That's why we can use so many things from a pig. Porcine products in medicine are very common. Um, like they use pig valves and things like that, yeah. So, so, so the pig also has like a skin, right? So what does it do? It, it rolls in mud to cover itself. It's a, that's why they call it cochino in Spanish, you know, cochinos. They're, they're dirty things, pigs. But Allah's given us, he's ornamented us with, with clothes it's, he, to honor us. So we're, we're bashar, which means we have bashara, like we have skin. We don't have feathers or fur, but he gave us clothes to ornament us, to, to, to adorn us, right? And, and then, and then he, we eat cooked food generally. So we cook our food. Uh, so we do things that animals don't do, Right? Animals, like, they go down to the trough. He's given us the ability to eat in a dignified way. Then we ornament our food. We do all these things to, to, to remove that animality from us, right? And that's why they're very important. So this idea, the modern idea is we're just animals, you know. So the Gnostic idea is, you know, this, the human being is this rarefied thing, but we, there, it's, we're, a, we're, a, we're between the two. We're, we're this creation between animals and between angels. We can go down to the animal level or we can go up to the angel level. So in that way he's right, you know, that we are not animals per se, like we, we're not, we're something else. But we do, we do share with the animals that and that's why to say that we're animals is not correct. And, and, I, and I would agree with him on that. I mean, I, was, I heard once, I was in a, like, said this before, but in a moment of weakness, listening to KPFA, and uh, there was this guy on the, on the radio who said, uh, he said, uh, you know, well, the problem is humans just haven't come to the terms with the fact we're just a bunch of animals. And, and I was thinking, I just wanted to say to the guy, really, like as you're driving down in your BMW on a cell phone talking to a radio station that's like miles away from you, like their donkeys are doing that right now, you know, newts are doing that. You know, pigs are sitting around discussing metaphysical problems. You know, I mean, it's, it's just not right to say that human beings are animals. But that's what they want to do. They want to reduce us to our animality and then humiliate us with it. Because uh, when people behave like animals, they humiliate themselves. You see on Black Friday when they all burst into these places and they go mad. They're like, they, they, you can say they're like animals, but it's not fair to animals. Like it really isn't fair to animals because Allah says we're us falasafidin when we go there. We're the lowest of the low. Allah says in hum kal anam bal hum adallu. That's called harf istidrak. It's like to make a correction. You know, I mean, Allah doesn't make mistakes, but it's a rhetorical device in the Quran. So, so 
It's no, they're even more astray. Why? Because animals don't behave like that. Animals don't, like a human will go out and kill a bunch of animals for sport just to kill them, hunt them, put trophies on their walls and things. A lion, if you watch like these uh, documentaries where they show the lion and all the zebras, they're all eating lunch. You know, they're just like in Africa, they're just eating lunch. Uh, I was in West Africa. We were driving and we saw all these wild animals. I can't remember what they were. We saw all these wild animals. And I was with one of the Americans. Who said, he said, well, this is just like the nature channel. I said, no, no, the nature channel is like this. You know, <laughs> this is real. <laughs> you know, but, but anyway, so, so he, uh, you know, um, the, the, when the lion comes, they all start running. But right when he gets one, they go back to eating. He's like, uh, Zach's lunch today, you know, it's, it's over. You know, they can go back and do what they're doing. But humans know. And that's why the Arab, he said, The Bedouin, he's walking in the desert. He said, I heard the howl of a wolf. And, and, and I found comfort in the howl of the wolf. But then I heard a human voice and I nearly flew out of my skin. Because the thing about a wolf, you know the nature of a wolf. He's not going to surprise you. The wolf's not going to behave like, you know, a cat or a... It's going to behave like a wolf. You know what you're dealing with. But humans, it could be a demon. It could be an angel. You just don't know. And very often it is a demon. Too often. Yeah. Any other... One... What? what okay. Yeah. Go ahead. <coughs> Um, so I just wanted to ask about um, the relationship between the caste um, system. So you have the Brahmin, the warrior, um, yeah, Kishtiya, Shudra, yeah, Kshatriya, yeah. uh, Shudra, and the Vaishya. Mm -hmm. And um, how does that relate to the cosmology of the human being? Um, because you mentioned, well, yeah, uh -huh, you, you, men you mentioned that um, there were four elements that make up the individual. So you have the Rutuba, mm -hmm. Harara, uh, Bardiya. But then on a on a sociological, yeah, on a sociological yeah. level, you yeah. have the four. Uh, within the caste system. Sure. Well, I think, I mean, the caste system institutionalizes what, what is natural phenomena. Every culture has Brahman people. Every culture has Vaishya. Every culture has the Kshatriya. Every culture has the Shudra. I mean, it's just like our untouchables are homeless people. And they're untouchables. Who's going to go down there? Very few people will actually go down there and, and spend time with them and talk to them and you know, and you see them, they're dirty, they're filthy. You don't really even want to touch them. So they're in that way, they're like untouchables. And then you have the, you know, the people that do the, you know, garbage. I mean, traditional garbage men were different from now. Garbage men are, they genuinely are sanitation engineers. I mean, these guys have good jobs. They just, they don't even touch the garbage. They just have these machines come out and turn it over. So it's different. That'll probably all be AI anyway soon enough. But, but, but in any case, um, and then you have the, the Vaishya are like the commercial class, the farmers, the people who do all that. And then you have the military, you have police and you have military. And then you have the Brahman, the intellectuals, the politicians, the, the doctors, the, the, uh, you know, the educated people, the, the scholars, that's all. So, so those are just natural phenomena. They just institutionalized it. I mean, the Mauritanians did the same thing. The Mauritanians have, have almost identical to the, the Hindu caste system. Very similar. And it was done by one of their leaders. I mean, he actually said, your tribes are going to do this, your tribes are going to do this, your tribes are going to do that. So he just gave them all tasks. So they have their, the, what they call the Arab, and they're the warrior class. They're the, what would be the Kishtiya. And then they have the Zawaya, which are the Brahman class. And then they have the, the Zanaga, which are like the Vaishya. And then they have the Somal, which are like the more, you know, kind of a Mambudin class. Yeah, it's very strange. It's amazing. Um, so I was really interested in the idea of how uh, we name things and we make them from particulars to universals. Right. But I was also curious how um, when we make universals into particular, or like, like for example, what you mentioned, naming um, animals and the effect it has, and how the Prophet Sallallahu he would name... He named everything. He named everything. Yeah. So I was wondering about the, the implication of, like, of that 
Well, I think one, the Prophet ﷺ had very few things. Uh, so, so naming something is honoring it. Because things that you have, that you possess, they have a reality. And, and, uh, and to treat them well is a kind of adab. Like to put things in their proper place, not to, you, I mean, there's a story of Rifa'i. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I, I don't have a problem believing it, but he was talking about how everything is sentient. Even, even Jamadat have a type of uh, sentience. And, and I just read an article two days ago about how they, they now, they've recorded the sound of, of, of plants when they're cut. So they actually make a kind of screaming sound when they're cut. And I was once clipping a, this is a true story, I was once clipping a, um, a tree and I, was th and I was wondering in my head uh, if the tree was feeling this. And right when I had that thought, I literally clipped my finger, the tip of my finger, and it, and it bled. And, and trees bleed, you know. So things are sentient. I mean, uh, Dr. Uh, Cleary said that one of the things that he would do with children, he said children love to tear up flowers. So when he would be with kids and they would tear up flowers, he would cry. <laughs> like, just like, why are you doing that? It's like, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Children like to do that, rip flowers apart. They also flash light What's that? Flashlight. What's that? They flash light. They flash light, yeah. Interesting. So this, this is our plant expert over here. Uh, it's a good thing to be an expert in, plants. One of, the, one of the, the things about, you know, everything has a, one of the, the kashf of Al-Junaid was that he heard all the plants tell their medicinal properties. Like they spoke to him. So, so, because I think a lot of where people got that ancient knowledge was from listening. And trees speak, you know, trees are very, yeah, the peanuts. Low Akbar. Yeah. So, so, yeah, sentience is, uh, it's, it's very, anyway, he said that, you know, he was having this debate, and then he, he dropped uh, the, the, the glass on the thing, and he heard a, like an ouch from the glass. It was like a kish for him. That was with Imam al Rifai. It's in his book, uh, Burhan and Wa'iyah. Yeah. I think it's in Burhan and Wa'iyah. I read it in one. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Asya. Tfadari. Go ahead, it's pretty loud in here. Thank you. So, do you think there's any connection between the four elements and the four temperaments? Yeah, there is. I mean, even in the tradition there is. So, so the temperaments, which are the Balgami, Safrawi, Saudawi, and Demui, which phlegmatic, choleric, melancholic, and sanguine. So, sanguine is hot and wet, choleric is uh, hot and dry, melancholic is cold and dry, and phlegmatic is cold and wet. So, so um, the foods that you eat based on your temperament will, like people that are, are uh, phlegmatic, it's better for them to eat m things that are more hot and dry. Like coffee's good for them, dates are good for them, things like that. People that are hot and dry, if they eat too much of the hot and dry, it, it'll excite that. So. I mean those, and then they have degrees. So this is all in the old books of the, but um, I mean I, I actually think that there's a lot of validity to the, the four element theory. Um, it's not as popular anymore, but there are still people that that adhere to it and do believe it. And there's an interesting new translation of Avicenna's book, uh, the first volume of the Qanun, which was done by three researchers. At um, uh, two of them are at George. Washington University, the medical school there, they're, they're MDs, I think, and one of them is at the uh, National Institute of Health, and they make an argument that, that actually, that they are, it's a very accurate description, and, and so they have a whole new interpretation of it based on modern science, which is very interesting. So, but it's also, it's, it's a lot of our tradition is, um, <clears throat> it's tajiriba, you know, it's, these, these are sciences that came out of experience and testing and things like that. So, 
سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك والعصر ان الانسان لفي خسر الا الذين امنوا وعملوا صالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغ به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا باسماعنا وابصارنا وقوتنا ابدا ما احييتنا واجعل ثارنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل الدنيا اكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا غايه رغبتنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخاف ولا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الرحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين